<laughs> I feel like we actually need to change this. Nah. Like we've we've, we've, we've grown. We've, we, yeah. We're parents now. Let's do it like different. We're... Start it now. Let's do it differently. Oh, that's a new one. <clears throat> Just on the fly. Babe, improv, you know, you're an on actor. On the fly. Yeah, what, how would it be? Okay, I think it must go like this. Hey guys, uh, welcome to our channel. This is the Ndlovo Zancat. I'm Stephanie and this is Hungani. Done. <laughs> We'll work on it. We'll work on it. But anyway. Hey, hey guys. guys. Welcome, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy from Ghana and I'm chilling, chilling here with my lovely wife, Stephanie. And, and together, together we are the Globos. And this is the Globos Uncut. Bam, 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 bam. Auntie, I think I got it right. You know, I'm, I'm actually surprised. It took me. It only took me like a, no, a couple of that. years. Hold on, hold on. You know, it's a new year, so <laughs> maybe it'll take over. <laughs> Please make sure you like, make sure you comment down below throughout the video. Make sure you subscribe and join the notification bell squad. Mm -hmm. oh, first video of the year. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. It's three weeks into the New Year, but still, have, for, for the whole month of Jan, you're allowed to still say Happy New Even Year. Even Feb. Really? Yeah. Hi, hi. For Jan, we can still say Happy New Year. We hope you guys had a peaceful, relaxed, festive, and joyful. joyful, and that you are all ready for the new year. Yeah. If you haven't already jumped in, we're easing ourselves into it. And um, I think we've we've kind of chosen a nice way to, to ease ourselves into this, which is basically, we're going back in time mm. to some of the games, some of the videos that we did that you guys really, really enjoyed. And we thought, why not revisit it with a little bit of a spin? So throughout the year, you'll kind of see us revisiting some of our old stuff, our love story. Mm. Today is another story time. Hey, we know you guys love story times. We, we experienced a miscarriage. We've decided that day we're going to be talking about mental health. All right, so I'm going to be asking my lovely wife some questions. Anyway, guys, so yeah, we're pregnant. Yay! Intimacy after having a baby. <sighs> so we're not going to waste any time. We're going to dive right deep into the story um, and just share what we need to share. Right? Right. Here we go. So today, what are we doing? So today, can I just quickly side note and yeah. say that there's a few people who already know what's happening today before the rest of you, before you even saw the caption, you already <laughs> knew. And the reason you already knew is because you are part of our Inner, inner Circle, circle fam. If yes. you want to join the Inner Circle, make sure that you um, subscribe. Email link is down below. Join the family. It's growing and we appreciate you guys so much. Yes. So we're going to be playing a game of Never Have I Ever, which I'm sure most of you are very familiar with. But uh, we've played this game before and it was loads of fun and a lot of laughs and so forth. But today's version is a little bit more serious. It's, you know, a little bit deeper. Uh, we're expanding a little bit on whether you have or whether you haven't. So I'm hearing spice. That's all I'm hearing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go for it. <sighs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit nervous. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's a safe space. Um, if you are watching, please comment in a safe space manner. Please, guys. Please. Because we've been very vulnerable, very open. Um, and very real, so please, yeah. be nice. If you know me, like this is not my usual energy, so I'm already on edge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Okay. So, first question. First question. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Never have I ever stayed in a relationship that I really wasn't feeling. Mm. Mm. I think a lot of people, more than we think, have been in those relationships where you're like, you know the relationship is over or that... Or well, you've decided that Or you've it's even over. decided that it's over. But, you know, hey, for whatever reason you're deciding that let's just stay and see how, you know, how we can make it work or maybe the I thing... I didn't have the balls to leave. Yeah, you didn't. No. I eventually you know, got the, like, 
got the courage to leave but my biggest thing was like i didn't want to hurt this person mm. because when you really care about someone you don't want to hurt them even though you can see that this relationship is not for you and mm. you know you don't want to move forward and so i think there's a lot of things that come into play with that one but it's also um, like in the same time when you're not leaving you're also hurting them indirectly so exactly like, oh. so that's so that's the thing by you staying you also hurting and you prolonging something you know that that's is inevitable, inevitable. Never have I ever lied to someone in this room. I mean, it's only one to us in this room. <laughs> if you've been in a relationship, are in a relationship, or you're even married, and you tell me you have never lied mm. to your partner, you are lying. You think so? I think so. I mean... We're not distinguishing between the type the of level. lie and the level of lie. Mm. We're not talking about a Just, white lie or whatever. Yeah. If you've lied, uh, if you a have never, lie. you are lying. <laughs> you are lying. <laughs> okay. Never have I ever considered life without the person next to me. Oh, you know, it's like whoever wrote these questions is just calm. Who came up with these questions? Us. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> At this point, this should just be I have. <laughs> Screw <laughs> never have I ever. <laughs> um, yeah. So, do you want to share? Tough, hey? Yeah. We are considered life without this person. I think there's like a lot of. Not a lot. There's a couple of scenarios mm -hmm. that um, come to mind because it's not something that is of recent times. Yeah. But like um, a lot of the times still dealing with like a bunch of mental health stuff, like I'd often wonder like what would life be like if you like died, mm -hmm. you know? Um, which was just like very dark mm -hmm. um, on its own. And then another part was like, if we just weren't together, mm -hmm. you know, and I think like sometimes trying to play out all of these like different cards and trying to see like, what's the best way to go about things so that this doesn't happen. Or if it were to happen, how do I need to make sure that I'm secure? What if she just decided to leave? Like we've built everything together. Like yeah. it's this, it's that, like, I don't have anything of my own. Yeah. Literally the apartment, like all of the cars, like, yeah. so I think a lot of the times it was coming from a place of like insecurity more than anything else, mm -hmm. um, outside of the parts where I was just afraid of losing you from like a death perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think firstly, I'd want to say like in the times that I have considered it, which are not many times, mm -hmm. it was for sure when we weren't in a good space, mm -hmm. are we going to actually make it through the storm? And, is it and when once you ask that question, am, are we going to make it through the storm? I think it's a given that you would then consider, well, what would life look like without, without this person? So mm -hmm. that's the first thing. And the second thing is, um, I think sometimes we can think that if you have that thought about, you know, your partner or your husband or your wife or whatever that somehow it means that you've fallen out of love with them and for me that was never the case it wasn't a question about do i still love you or mm. it was really just going we are in such a rocky place right now mm. we are literally fighting for our marriage so i am gonna think about okay so then what does it look like if yeah. if we if we weren't together never have i ever lied about being okay bruh i mean yeah we need a new game <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that one's another... That's the most it's common one. It's the most common one. I mean, how many times people will be like, how are you? Oh, I'm okay, I'm okay, you know. Mm. Um, but I think it's important to sometimes be able to be honest and say when you're not okay, right? Yeah. Um, even if you just find a safe space in which you can share that. But I think we've all put on that facade of like, I'm going to just act like I'm okay, but really deep down inside, you know, you're not okay. You yeah. Know? I think it's also a thing of like the people that you have around you, what kind or type 
of people mm-hmm. those are because like sometimes you find that you're the one that everyone leans on mm-hmm. and then the time you open up someone will be like ah there's no way what yeah. you yeah ah, come on dog you know yeah. stuff like that and it's like then you end up not having a space where you can actually be vulnerable and say that i'm not okay because yeah. it's like the way your life looks the way your life is set up you should it, be okay. you should be okay yeah. yeah you know so i think it's very important to know who's within your circle mm-hmm. shout out to the inner circle see what i did <laughs> uh huh. number five never have i ever had suicidal thoughts Okay, to share. You have n- at this point I haven't touched that <laughs> I have never. Um yo good deep guys. Mm. It's even getting hot in here. There's been a couple of times, mm-hmm. definitely more than two. Um I think like the most difficult part of having this type of thought is like for me at least the amount of pain that it will bring to my family mm-hmm. doesn't equate to kind of if i can say tipping the scale mm-hmm. on the amount of pain that I'm experiencing that's causing me to have this thought. Mm-hmm. So if it wasn't for not wanting to cause my family so much pain, mm-hmm. then I probably would have gone through with it. But mm-hmm. because thinking of the family more than myself mm-hmm. kept me from doing it and I think sometimes like again it's this thing of not being able to know who will be able to if i can say carry that burden with mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. um during that time and you know, like obviously we cast our burdens and our cares onto the lord for he cares for us but on like a like i need you to be with me so that i don't veer off even further from where i am right now like it gets so difficult to know who you can trust in that space who has the capacity to hold mm-hmm. that type of um i guess situation or that type of um mental health situation if i can call it that so yeah and at, at all the times that it's happened it's always been like at the peak of something mm-hmm. like when i was in the domestic violence relationship like at the peak of it, it was just like mm-hmm. there's really no point but at the same time it was like yo imagine my parents getting a call your son across the ocean like mm. that for me was just like it's yeah you know after affording me the opportunity to go and learn and study and stuff abroad anyway so yeah it was just every time i found myself in a place where to like i feel like i've tried yeah everything to try and resolve whatever this may be or to get out of the situation it would then be like well yeah there's only i mean in as much as I answered, I've never, um, and again, you know, this is, I think everybody's um, experience is definitely, like, different mm-hmm. um, when answering this question. But in, you know, places where, you know, I've read or I've looked into it a little bit, um, even in the work that, you know, we do with MTV and so forth, um, speaking on your point about you know how it would affect your family i know that in some instances some people believe that them not being here is actually going to serve their family um and that it's actually better better for them that they're better off you know um and that they, they they have less of a burden or if they weren't here or their life um doesn't really have purpose and meaning so it's not like anyone might you know miss them being here but they're actually doing their family a favor by doing what they're doing and Mm. obviously we're not experts we're not you know psychologists we're not um in any way saying 
this we're not doing a diagnosis thing or saying this is how you deal with it or any of those mm-hmm. kinds of things right but just speaking openly i think about being in that place takes a lot of courage you know or answering i have in that space takes a lot of courage so um good on you for doing that and i think my two cents besides the two cents i've already given would also be that <laughs> one thing i firmly believe is that the minute something is taken out into the light or brought out into the light then it breaks its power and stronghold over you and i say that because if this is something that you're thinking about or have been thinking about i would really encourage that you bring it out of darkness into light by speaking to you know a professional getting help you know getting on um we'll put a helpline number anything just to bring it out of the darkness because whilst you're battling with this you know in your secret place sometimes that feels like the only way out mm. but once it's brought into the light and you can start processing and dealing with it and getting the help that's needed then that stronghold um i think has the potential to be broken so that's my five cents because i really feel like this is a very big issue that we have worldwide but also within our country and i think mm-hmm. yes we're just sort of brushing over it and definitely not from um from personal experience not from an, but to be able to also distinguish like how does one then look and define like intrusive thoughts because you sometimes you know you can get an intrusive thought that just comes out of nowhere where I've had that before where I think to myself I wonder if I would like ra- the most random I'm on a top of a balcony and go like if I were to drop down to the bottom is that a suicidal thought is it an intrusive thought what is the difference are there differences and I think just holistically speaking from a mental health perspective I think mm. that it would be definitely something that I for one would want to speak to a uh, actual expert on 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 saying like you know how does one actually identify or diagnose you know um all these mental health issues that sometimes maybe lead to you know suicidal thoughts mm. or planning through or intrusive thoughts and all that and i think in doing that kind of then one will touch on whether it's depression whether there's maybe personality disorder all those kinds of things you know so yeah. i think that from this question alone definitely we're going to look into getting someone to really delve into into this topic never have i ever not had a place to call home never have i ever not had a place to call home finally <laughs> i have never blessed we are so blessed in Thank that regard you, we are so blessed that we've, we've always had a place to call home you know we have um amazing family parents friends um support support so even if ever this was not our home we'd always have home mm. right okay never have i ever had a friend or family member not believe me when i opened up about my struggles i'm going to just <laughs> say you know yourself that's uh, all I'm going to say <laughs> i think um it goes back to what you were saying earlier you know um people can really look at your life and your circumstances and mm. perceive you as being or your family as being just either perfect or very close to perfect and like what could you possibly you know struggle with what mm. could you possibly um have an issue with and the minute anyone yeah and the minute anyone has that outlook um then even if they don't admit it i've been in conversations where I'll maybe decide to you know open up to a certain person and i can just tell in their response that they think i am opening up because they've opened up or mm. um that that possibly can't be i remember even with hongs and i in our, especially now you know early stages more of our relationship like even if we were to mention we had an argument family be like what on earth could you two argue about or like huh was it it's no, it wouldn't even i don't even think it would make it to a list of um 
things worth mentioning you argued about you probably mm. argued about who's going to do the dishes something like that you know what i mean and i think that is dangerous because now you then end up feeling like you don't have a space where you can be open and vulnerable mm. you don't have a space where you can you know openly share what it is that you're going Seek through advice. or get advice because now people are really going to question whether you're being truthful or they're going to downplay your struggle because mm. it doesn't amount to, I don't know, somehow we've put levels they to people's struggles or they don't to. think it amounts to anything, which can be very uh, disheartening. So, mm. yeah. No cap. <laughs> Never have I ever been to therapy. We both have. Countless times. Yes. I haven't been countless times, um, but th my first time that I went to therapy, what year was that? 20... 2020? Yeah, COVID year. Yeah. COVID year. Um, and it was literally like, okay, <laughs> there's no way that I'm going to be able to actually continue if I don't go to, to, to therapy. Both Ngani and I were like, but that's this listen you're wilding yeah so i think there was a lot of things that sort of was building up mm. and there were a lot of things that was being bottled in and you know being the strong put together kind of person and known all my life it was kind of just like no you know i'm praying through this and that's not to say that prayer doesn't help but god also enables um people with the skill set and purpose and calling to help. So I think the breaking point for me was I was literally functioning every single day, feeling like I'm functioning outside of myself. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like I was watching myself doing things. Mm -hmm. And I remember that there was like a couple of times where I'd run um, like in the car, but I'd run a red robot just because I'm so deep in thought that I'm not even present in what I was doing, you know? And I thank God that like I was not in an accident or anything mm. there. Um, or even caused an accident. Or even caused an accident. And I would so seldomly actually be present in what I am doing, you know? I would do things and then look back and be like, did I... Did I just do that? Mm. I would sometimes, you know, just have these meltdowns and breakdowns, but then, you know, also feel like um, I needed, I think also that's where the, the stopping alcohol and all that stuff comes in play because then it was like becoming a thing where it's like, no, no, I need to have a glass of wine in order to just hoosah through certain situations and there was this dependency on it. So I think therapy definitely um, helped with just, creating these boxes and stuff and a bit of order in my mind and getting to the root of why I was feeling what I was feeling and going through and how to deal with those things in a healthy way. Yeah, and I think like the thing about therapy, it's not a it's not a quick fix. It's not a quick fix, but it's also not a I came mm -hmm. and now it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's it's a continual journey. And the beautiful part of having someone like that is then you don't have this type of thing that we were just speaking about, which is not having someone or a space where you can go to in order to mm -hmm. speak about something, even if it's just to vent, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and also like sometimes we fear... Um, especially like if you're in the spotlight um, and you're popular, you fear being recognized by your therapist mm -hmm. and then probably coming out on headlines of a, a tabloid. So there's platforms like the Panda app, which I, for example, am... I speak about it all the time. I host sessions there as well because you can join anonymously. So I still today actually do sessions there. Sometimes it's a one hour session, mm -hmm. sometimes it's a 30 minute session that I join in anonymously and it's via your phone. You can have your earphones on. You and can it's be, free. It's free. You can mm -hmm. be on the treadmill, whatever it is, but you're going through a session. For a lot of us, therapy is like this unattainable thing because it is expensive. Nobody's saying, you know, especially within private practice, practice you know um therapy can for large majority of people you know is just too expensive but mm -hmm. i think it's worth also noting but there are there are other ways in which you can access therapy hungani mentioned the panda app that's free you know you don't have to there's there are 
um, inexpensive ways that you can still get help. What I'm trying to say is I think we shouldn't be so quick to just hear the word therapy and then completely switch off and say, well, I can't afford it, therefore I'm not even going to try mm. and find other um, avenues that could also serve as therapy, right? So I think it's very important for us to recognize if therapy I think we all need therapy, quite frankly. I don't think there's a person who can say, no, I don't need therapy. Yeah. I think we all have issues, right? And I think that it's important to then see how can I get the help even within the situation, financially or other, that I find myself in yeah. um, is very important. Also, I did like a face thing because I wanted to say something, but I don't want to cut her off, um, which is like this whole notion of, I don't want to pay someone to listen to my uh, someone. I, I don't know how the saying like I don't want to pay to talk yeah, to someone. Yeah, basically like it's a waste of money. Yeah, I don't want to pay to talk to someone, but you pay to get your haircut. You yeah. pay to wash your car, get yeah. your car washed. Like you pay for all of these things for your convenience. Yet the the care for your mental health, yeah, for your life, is something that you like. Mwah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you you get what I'm trying to say. Like it's an investment for your own self, basically, yeah, and a very important one. Never have I ever questioned the meaning of life. So at this point, I've only used that thing once. <laughs> Again, if not a hundred percent, ninety nine point nine percent of people, yeah, I think have questioned at some point. At some point, and if you have it, you will at some point yeah. question like. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> Actually, you know, what is the meaning of it all? Yeah, What's the point of it all? Is there you a know? restart button? What <laughs> is... So I think... Yeah, I'll yeah. leave it at that. I won't expand on yeah, that no, one. Yeah, no, that one's pretty, pretty yeah. self-explanatory. Never have I ever questioned my faith and God. <sighs> yes. I have. Definitely, I have. Yeah, I think for me it happened um, yeah, yeah, this this deep. specific um, time. I think it was like uh, 2013, 14, somewhere there, uh, when it was the first time I moved out of home. And I grew up in a Christian household, Christian home, you know, grew up Anglican, but, you know, parents. Um, anyway. But we grew up in a house of believers. It was, it was, it was there. But I question my faith because I don't think that I ever sought to find God for myself and know Him for myself. So a lot of the things I knew about my faith were things that were taught. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. The foundation was there. But there was never, from my side, a desire, or um, I never worked at maturing in who I was in Christ, mm. right? So I kind of stayed with the Sunday school, I call it Sunday school knowledge of who God was. Mm. And Sunday school knowledge, meaning the foundational knowledge of who God is, is fine when you're a kid. But when you grow up, then you need to move to the more meatier truths, mm. right? And so for me, when I was starting to now like figure out in like who's God, what is this thing about personal relationship that you hear all the time and so forth, I definitely had questions, especially around things that I didn't understand in the Bible. There's many things in the Bible that I think a lot of us sit with and go like, make this make sense. Mm. And so I had the question about trying to reconcile the God that my parents and, you know, that I was taught about versus the God that's, you know, in the Bible versus how I've experienced God. And these three experiences were not, they were not, they were not reconciling. But I think later on, it was important for me to go through that phase because then I was literally brought to the end of myself. Like I was brought to the point where I was like, actually, now that I have found God for myself, now that I've actually cried out to him to have a personal relationship with him and I started to experience him differently for myself and he started to reveal himself to me in a way that I've never received before, mm -hmm. then I started to kind of go, okay, this is now where my faith is grounded. This is what I believe to be true because I have 
actually experience in them. And it's not because of what was taught in Sunday school or my parents. Those things, yes, it is there because it has laid the foundation. Yeah. But I started to take my walk with God very serious. And as I started to mature, as I started to want more of God, that's when he started to reveal more of himself to me. But I definitely had a good, I would say like two years, year to two years where I, I questioned Christianity. I questioned like, you know, um, one of the things I would question in the Bible is like related to whether it was slavery or race or, you know, sometimes now you hear people saying, hey, the white man's religion, you hear all these kinds of things about mm. oppression and, and, you know, being a person of color, I would be like, Okay, how how do we reconcile that mm. with the reality of who I feel who I am? And the only answer for me at least was that I needed to find God for myself. I needed to have a personal experience with him to know that there are still things I don't understand. Please don't get me. There are mm. still things in the Bible where I go, this here is going to be a faith matter because this one plus one is still not equal in two mm. in this context but it's okay because in faith i'm gonna trust that i know that i know what i know and i believe it yeah yeah i think it's pretty much the same for me like growing up in a in a christian family going to church every week um mm -hmm. and like the the decision to even like become born again was a decision made under like the if i can say supervision of my parents mm. and you know like yeah so by the time you get to young adult and you step out of the house mm. and you're by yourself then that's when you really get to have a chance or a moment to like experience what being christian is for yourself mm -hmm. because your parents are not there to say let's go to church on a sunday your parents mm -hmm. are not there to say come let's pray tonight or whatever the case might be so i think for me it was very much like after getting to high school and like being in a methodist school and seeing all the nonsense that was happening there i was just like yo <laughs> so 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 and then got to the States of all places, Hollywood at 18. So a whole lot of stuff. I don't think 18 year olds should be seeing that was just also like, wh where is God in all of mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, very quickly then you start to, because of the situations that you're experiencing, mm -hmm you start to call on God because it's just like, yo, this is above me. Yeah. Like, I genuinely cannot handle what's happening here. Yeah. Um, and once you experience God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, like no one can take that away from yeah. you. Like that's just a fact. Yeah. Um, regardless of how you may have questions, you may wonder this, you may wonder that, but mm -hmm. the mere fact that you had that experience, that encounter, no one can take that away from you. Yeah. So I think it's pretty much the same. Um, and also like learning that sometimes you fall into religious behaviors mm -hmm thinking that that's how you'll get closer to God, yeah. yet you are veering away from actually having a relationship yeah. with him and what that actually looks like versus yeah. the religious habits that you've created um, in trying to yeah. access him. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah. again, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, Christian or no, no, not Christian, but even if you are Christian, I think most of us have also questioned God because... Yeah. There is so much injustice in this world. I mean, just turn on the TV, just go through your social media. There's so much happening, even right now. And there's mm. always, for something. as long as history has happened, there's always something, you mm. know. Um, injust there's injustice, there's, you know, there's so much things that make you question. That, but okay, how does God still exist mm. in this messed up world? world but then if you also bring it into like your home some uh, some of us you know are going through things where you're just like i cannot see god 
-hmm. within the situation that I am in because the situation is so painful. The situation mm -hmm. is so difficult. Mm -hmm. The situation almost seems like there is no end. Yeah. So how am I supposed to speak of a good God when my experience um, does not show of a good God, right? And I think a lot of times people ask that question, where was God when this is happening? Mm -hmm. Where's God when this is happening? Where's God when children are being this and this and this and this and everyone, you know, is, I think a lot of people, that's the first thing that they ask, where's, yeah. where's God in, in the world of such cruelty? Um, and I think like a lot of times I used to, especially as a Christian, I'd be scared of that question. I'm like, please can someone, please do not ask me <laughs> that question. Ask Don't ask me that question. Why would God let this happen? Uh, yes. You know, why would God <laughs> let this happen? And I think I've, I've become okay with not having the answers yeah. for a lot of questions and being okay with saying, you know, I actually don't know myself, but also what I do know for a fact is that evil and cruelty does not equate the absence of God, Perfect. because at the end of the day, every single person, the bad person, the good person, all of us are given choice. And if God, if we lived in this world of euphoria, mm. you know, the world that we hope we're going to enter into, the but if we world. lived in this perfect world where there was no sin or there was no bad and there was no wrong, then how do you distinguish or how do you elevate choice? Then mm. how do, how do you know then that um, I'm serving God out of choice right mm. or how do you know i'm being a good person because i can be a bad person but i am choosing to be if we were all just given no choice and everything was perfect and there was mm. no difficulties or struggles or challenges or anything like that then how how do you know what i'm trying to say like then, then how living in the land of milk and honey exactly and we are not there. We're not there right now we're still living in a space where every single person no matter who must choose mm. the life that they are going to live and it is not to say that these choices do not have consequences there will always be repercussions and there will always be consequences but mm. i do want to say that it does not equate that god is not in the midst of all of that even when we can't see him even when yeah. we can't feed him we know that he is there right so i think that that's not necessarily answering the question and i don't have a theologically sound intellectual uh, go to proverbs what, 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 what i don't have that for you right now but what i can say is i know that his goodness still overflows mm. even when it doesn't feel that way right mm. so i think um yeah i just i just really hope that you know that lands wherever it needs to land just know that also like he's not forgotten about you he's not left you he's not forsaken you or anything like that um yeah he never will because why God is good all the time and all the time God is good Amen, Amen. so we'll be taking some offerings at this moment uh, <laughs> please uh, take out your phones snap scan I'm joking <laughs> no really um, Whew, thank you guys I'm burning man this hot. was hot thank you guys for like joining joining our rather heated never have I ever yeah, if you have additional questions, maybe, you know, that go along these lines, or even if it's not along these lines, um, yeah, just comment down below. Yes. You know, maybe something a little lighthearted could help. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and um, if anything, from what we've discussed, you know, um, struck has, a nerve. Yeah, struck a nerve or touched you in any kind of way um can let us know you don't have to let us know but um yeah man guys jesus loves you okay that's what i want to end with but what wants to make that face <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and make sure that you join our mailing list yes. the inner circle link is down below Bye. see you guys on the next one yeah, no, it was really hot. It was quite hot. Yeah. It was really, really hot. Well done. Well done. That's my husband's.